Well, hello there. I just want to share a short thought to encourage you today. Um, in a crisis, there's two important things that get disrupted. One, one is our connections and the other is our structure or routine. And whether this be business or military um, or just overall situations like this, re-establishing connection, uh, connection and structure are two of the key things to help us to move forward. Today and tomorrow, I want to look at each of these, uh, but I'm going to start today with looking at our connections. Now, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, 25, uh, says this, And let us consider how we may spur one another on to love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. You see, meeting together is at the very heart of the gospel because we're saved into a new family. We're members together of Christ's body. So togetherness is actually an issue of our identity and who we are in Christ. And also, practically, we need that encouragement um, to spur one another on, as these verses say. So as our normal forms of communication are disrupted, it's important that we re-establish good connections. That means we need to make effort to use and find new tools and new ways of communication. That might mean picking up the phone more than we did or learning to use video conferencing. Uh, and I think we're all on a learning curve. This is really strange, but it does mean change for us all. That's unavoidable. It might mean keeping or finding new routines to call people to get onto the church YouTube channel, to join a community group chat, or even in your post personal devotional life in, in connecting with God. But you see, connection calms us down in a crisis. And we all need to be taking care of our mental health, and we certainly need to be taking care of our spiritual well-being. Connection is important. And also where you connect. I think is really important. There's, there's lots of options right now and, and many of them are good. Um, you know, there's options of mega church broadcasts and high quality HD and all of this kind of thing. But church is essentially people. And the way we're choosing to communicate uh, as a church is our home to your home because that's where we all are. But connecting with the people that we know and love, your own church community, and then playing your part amongst that community is vital. Connection calms us down in a crisis. So let's not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Just by way of application, here's a little uh, thing that I borrowed from a friend's church. They've taken a two plus two plus two approach. Connect with two good friends, the people who support and encourage you. Connect with two people on the fringe of the church, maybe those who are vulnerable or isolating, maybe those who are relationally a little distant, or maybe those who are new to the church. And connect with two people from outside the church, maybe a neighbour, work colleague or whatever that you can encourage and connect with. And to try building this in to your daily routine. It doesn't need to be a half hour conversation with each of those people. Maybe it could just be a quick text message or, or something like that. Uh, you know, that, that might be all that's required. But trying to build that into our routines of connecting. Now, if you don't have like a neighborhood WhatsApp group or something like that, I'd really encourage you to set something up. Uh, we just posted a note through 10 doors near us and we're simply getting to know our neighbours. It's an opportunity for that. And we've already been able to uh, help some in need. And, and I'm sure that will flow both ways as time goes on. But folks, crisis disrupts our connection. We need to stay connected. Tomorrow, we'll have a look at structure and routine. But guys, let's stay connected.